These new Qualcomm Snapdragon laptops are a big step forward. Compared to Windows competitors, they have much longer battery life, significantly less fan noise, and appear faster in benchmarks. But they have been hyped like they are the next coming of Jesus. Well today, we're going to go beyond the hype to show you what these devices are really like, including who should buy one and who should not. To demonstrate this, let me introduce you to Jen, Varun, and Taylor. Jen uses her laptop for watching YouTube, responding to emails, and doing office work. Someone like her, for the most part, is going to love these laptops. Varun, on the other hand, relies on his laptop for professional tasks. If you're like him, it's hit or miss depending on application support. Finally, we have Taylor, a professional 3D modeler and video editor. He also enjoys playing the latest games in his downtime. If this sounds like you, these laptops are simply not powerful enough. Let's start with casual users like Jen. As demonstrated by Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, these new X Elite processors are a good amount faster than competing laptops with Intel or AMD. In fact, these perform better than a MacBook Air and similar to a MacBook Pro 14 with the M3 Pro 11 core chip. But these laptops cost a fraction of the price of that one, so they seem like much better value. We're going to get more into this later in the video, but for now, keep in mind that this is for multi-core performance. Apple continues to hold the lead in single core, so many applications will still feel faster on a Mac. In real-world use, I spent the whole day installing and testing applications on the Surface Laptop 7. That is while it was unplugged. I found its battery lasted substantially longer than a similar laptop with Intel or AMD. In fact, it felt like the same all-day battery that I'd get on a MacBook, and that is fantastic. But there's more. Fan noise on all these Qualcomm laptops was noticeably less than other Windows laptops, but none of these were as quiet as a MacBook Air and Pro. Those are dead silent for similar tasks, and unfortunately these Qualcomm laptops do get warm, but less so than other laptops with Intel or AMD. Now. Since these are based on a new architecture that uses a new instruction set, even for casual users, we needed to verify that everything works. We tested Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Microsoft Office, and Google Meets. All worked. The desktop versions of Slack, Discord, Zoom, and Teams worked perfectly too. If you work from home, using Citrix though, it does work, but the app protection module does not. So check with your company's IT department if that is required. On the peripheral front, our mouse, webcam, wireless printer, and AirPods worked. Our Razer keyboard did too. However, by default, it downloads the wrong version of Razer Synapse software. That version did not detect our keyboard and mouse, so we couldn't customize their settings. This issue was a theme with these new laptops. We found that many companies haven't updated their websites yet. So if they have a working version of their software, they often send you to the wrong version instead. In this case, you need to download Razer's beta software. Only then did the devices properly detect. Even Qualcomm themselves is not immune to this. Our Samsung Galaxy Book 4 did not have a working graphics driver. We were unable to raise or lower the display's brightness. We tried downloading the driver listed on Qualcomm's website, but from what we could tell and our viewers told us in our live stream, it kept downloading the wrong one. In fact, even a factory reset didn't work, and we ended up having to return and rebuy the laptop. Our second unit did not have this problem. Anyway, our Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge wasn't the only one with issues. Our Surface Laptop 7 would not always charge with our USB-C chargers. On occasion when we plugged one in, it said it was charging, but soon after said it was not. So at this stage, we have to use its included one. And during a web conference via Slack, the Surface randomly turned off. It didn't even shut down, just click, black screen. So, for casual users, these are a solid step forward from current Intel or AMD laptops, but right now, there are instabilities. All right, now we're going to turn it up a notch. Let's say that you are using your laptop for professional tasks, or you're starting a discipline that requires specialist software, just like Varun. In this case, performance and application compatibility matters a lot. With that said, let's start with a deeper dive on performance. There are several different models of these new Snapdragon processors. This is supposed to determine their max CPU and integrated GPU speeds. In Cinebench, which tests how the processor performs when maxed out, you can see that all these Snapdragon laptops perform better than similar laptops with Intel or AMD. Several of them perform substantially better, again, even eclipsing the performance of a MacBook Pro 14 with the M3 Pro 11 core chip. And FYI, to make these comparisons as apples to apples as possible, excuse the pun, we were very careful as to which laptops we compared them with. 
we chose to include the Yoga Slim 7 with AMD as it uses an identical chassis as the Slim 7X with the Snapdragon X Elite. And we included the Samsung Galaxy Book 416 with Intel as it uses a similar chassis to the Galaxy Book 416 Edge. Now, over a 10 minute torture test, several of these new laptops were able to sustain their full performance, which is great to see. One thing that you will notice from these graphs is that the processor model is not the determining factor in these laptops' performance. Just like all modern laptops, it's the power that the manufacturer chooses to feed to it and that the chassis cooling solution can dissipate. That is why our Yoga Slim 7X with its supposed slower X Elite 78100 chip beats laptops with the 8100. As Hardware Info, just like many other applications, does not yet work on these new laptops, we measure their power draw from the wall instead. To do a somewhat fair comparison, we then subtracted 7 watts of power for the needs of the rest of the laptop. With that in mind, when we look at power draw, you can see how deceiving these benchmarks can be. The Qualcomm laptops that compete with the MacBook Pro 14 draw around twice as much power. Since power efficiency is the most important factor for a laptop's processor, we created a scatter plot so you can see how efficient these are versus the competition. Compared to Intel, these new processors offer more performance for the same power. But when you divide their Cinebench scores by power draw, you can see that there are diminishing marginal returns when these Qualcomm processors are fed a lot of power. In fact, at higher power draws, they offer similar efficiency to Intel and are way behind Apple. To double check this, we ran Cinebench on a loop for 30 minutes while the laptops were on battery. After normalizing for the size of the batteries, you can see that the highest wattage Snapdragon laptops last the same as Intel. So their efficiency tapers off, but just at a higher wattage. For battery life as a whole, these laptops are better than Intel as I said, and AMD, but not as good as Apple. This is if you take out the Omnibooks result by the way. That laptop is an exception, because its performance is dropped by a ludicrous amount when on battery. And on that note, we notice significantly more inconsistencies in performance with these new laptops when compared to those from Intel, AMD and Apple. When this occurred, we did run the test multiple times and we've shown you the median. Also stating the obvious, these results are not statistically significant. We definitely need to do more testing, but they're the best we've got for you right now at this early stage, and I would call them directionally correct. Moral of the story, if you're a casual user or only doing burst performance tasks like many forms of programming, these new laptops are a good step forward, and they deliver more performance for the same power draw as Intel. However, if you plan to do sustained, very high performance tasks, their power efficiency drops. In this case, these Snapdragon laptops are only incrementally better than those with Intel and are way behind Apple's M3 MacBooks. Let's now switch gears and go through application compatibility. Video editors. If you're an Adobe Premiere Pro or After Effects user, there is no version available right now, but one is promised soon. DaVinci Resolve does have a compatible version, but it is in beta. For 3D modelers and engineers, Blender and AutoCAD works. However, for creators accessing large amounts of data, our 10 gigabit OWC Ethernet adapter did not. We had to resort to 2.5 or 1 gig adapters. For those using cloud file sharing, Dropbox works, but Google Drive Desktop does not. For designers, good news for you. Figma works, as does SketchUp Pro and Photoshop. However, InDesign and Illustrator are not available yet. Similar to the other Adobe Creative apps, they're supposedly coming in July. Audio folks, we tested Ableton, Native Instruments Isotope, and Recordbox. Nothing works. Programmers, we were able to install VS Code, connect to GitHub, download a Node.js and React website, and run it. For Java users, there is no official JDK available from Oracle, so don't expect to use these laptops in a corporate environment. OpenJDK did work, and we were able to install IntelliJ and run a very simple application. However, Android Studio did not work well at all. Emulation is not compatible and it took 50% longer to install packages and index the code than on our comparable AMD laptop. To round out programming, MySQL and Docker works. However, Docker requires you to explicitly download the ARM beta version. Cybersecurity folks, neither VMware nor VirtualBox works. And for data science, ML and AI folks, Power BI, R, PyTorch all works. However, MATLAB installs, but the performance is about half of a comparable Intel or AMD laptop. Let's drill into this last one. I am aware that Dave2D stated a performance drop of only 10% for non-native applications, ones that run through Microsoft's Prism emulation layer. Our results in MATLAB and Android Studio were far worse than his. It really depends on what you are emulating. Finally, Linux. We spent more time trying to get Linux going than almost everything else combined. 
nothing works outside of the Windows Linux subsystem. We tried Ubuntu 22.04 ARM, Ubuntu Server 24.04 ARM and Fedora 40 ARM. Nothing booted. Given how capable the Linux community is, I'm certain this will be solved soon. As application compatibility is likely to improve after this video goes live, we've published an article on our website so that we can keep you up to date. Finally, for people like Taylor who want the most performance out of their laptop, none of these come close to the CPU performance offered by larger ones with Intel, AMD or Apple. That's with their highest end chips. This is especially so for graphics. In gaming or 3D rendering, these laptops just aren't going to cut it. Fellow YouTuber Darwood has a great video out which shows how poorly these laptops currently perform in gaming. Go check that out, link below. Now AI. We're going to cover it in a completely separate video. But since there is so much hype and marketing around the power of these laptops' MPUs and their Terra operations per second, I just want to give everyone a dose of reality here. These laptops offer a fraction of the performance of Nvidia's lowest end dedicated graphics. So if any significant edge computing were to occur which is running AI tasks locally on your laptop, it is probably going to be driven by Nvidia, not Qualcomm. With that said, let's wrap. Since we used our own money to buy these laptops, we can say what we truly think. Overall, what Qualcomm have done here for the laptop industry is fantastic. However, these laptops are really being overhyped by influencers and the media, and that is the biggest problem. Believe it or not, these are not the next coming of Jesus. Yes, for many applications, they do give you better performance than competing laptops with Intel and AMD. They also deliver longer battery life and have less fan noise. But compared with Apple's M3 series, they aren't as efficient. And when it comes to their lead over Intel and AMD, it is a gap that may be closed soon. AMD is launching Zen 5 late July and Lunar Lake is coming from Intel. The risk of switching to Windows on ARM may be redundant. Heck, M4 laptops could blow these out of the water. Normally I wouldn't advise you to wait as something new is just always coming around the corner, but in this case you may want to. That being said, if you're shopping right now, for a casual user just like Jen, these are great. That is as long as you're patient with some of the software and driver issues that clearly need to be ironed out. Our favourite so far is the Surface Laptop 7. Compared to the MacBook Air, the Surface feels just as premium. It looks more stunning, it has a more modern display and more comfortable keyboard. It's also $100 cheaper for similar specs. But it's not a pure win. The MacBook Air is dead silent, it is more powerful in graphical tasks, it feels cooler to the touch, and it doesn't come with bloatware like many of these Qualcomm laptops do, or constant advertisements from Microsoft. Plus, right now, more applications work on Mac OS. I never thought I'd say that when talking about Mac vs Windows. Anyway, for this use case, I personally would buy the Surface. Make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell on as we have a full video coming comparing the MacBook Air to the Surface Laptop 7. For users like Varun who depend on specialist applications, it really depends on what you're doing. Right now some work, some don't, and some don't work as well. I would only buy now if you're sure that your applications work, or you're purchasing it as a secondary laptop or from a store with a decent return policy. As we continue our testing and comparisons of these new laptops, you'll find the ones that we like best on our website, as well as where to go to get the best deals on them. So definitely check that out. Plus, we just launched a new feature. Rather than have you wait for our full reviews to be published on these new devices, you can now read our test results as we test them. Finally, big thanks to our viewers and the Reddit community for helping us to find working versions of several of these applications. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and we will catch you later.